All right, here we go. Another edition of Knicks Fan TV's Court Vision. We are less than 30 days away from New York Knicks training camp to kick off the 2021-2022 season. And as we said, man, Court Vision is back. CP the franchise, Tommy D in the building. And Tommy, man, new additions for the New York Knicks. Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier out are Alfred Payton and Reggie Bullock. And, you know, one of the things you got to like about this new backcourt tandem is the chemistry that they had with the Boston Celtics. It was a small sample size, only about 131 regular season minutes logged. But over the course of that time, these two, one of the top two-man lineups in terms of net rating, uh, what are some of the things that came out to you as you looked at the film? CP, always great to be with you. The first thing that jumps out to me is versatility. And when you look at a situation like this with Fournier, it's very rare, actually, you get two players coming from the same team that weren't traded in the same deal, right? But what you, as you mentioned before, playing around 200 minutes, uh, nine games, games played together, here's what you're seeing. You're seeing a lot of two-man synergy, a lot of playing off of each other. Here's a play that was a little broken, but... A great way to utilize space is finding yourself an, an Elcott opportunity, which Fournier does here. You can see here from the corner, 9 of 14, 64%. Thanks to our friends from, friends from Stat Muse. We know how, know how much Tom Thibodeau loves the corner threes. These are opportunities in sort of not ideal offensive situations, right? This is a broken play. Cornette did not set a great screen here. They did get the switch. Focus on Miles Bridges here. He doesn't know who to guard, which allows Fournier just to slip to the corner there for that very quick uh, pass and catch and shoot. That, to me, tells a, a big story here. Without communicating, they are able to find spots together on the floor. They know where each other is and are at all times. And that's saying a lot because they really haven't played much together. Uh, but I think it's something that they can certainly look forward to here uh, to start the season. And it's very exciting for Nick fans. Yeah, as you said, moving without the ball, Fournier does a great job there. And, and you know, some off-ball action, maybe a little bit more of that we'll see from the Knicks offense this year in terms of opening things up that you didn't really see too much. I, I thought, you know, Bullock moved fairly well. He's one of the better cutters on the team. But, you know, Fournier will certainly add that dimension as well. Absolutely. And it was a bit of a weird lineup there if you were looking at it. You had Peyton Pritchard sort of way off the ball and Brown was the one sort of um, starting the action. Uh, you could say that Fournier was sort of the three there, but we're sort of in this positionless basketball and Fournier has the ability to play the one, two or three positions, um, guard a couple of spots as well. A great addition, no doubt. So let's take a look at this next one against the Celtics versus Bulls. And, and you have Fournier here kicking things off and running the break. Another example of versatility, a guy who can rebound, get you out in transition, but also has vision like a point guard. He very easily could have reversed this ball, would have been a very sound decision to see if he can get something to Tatum on the opposite side. But Kemba Walker, again, another corner, three opportunities, finds the corner, outruns Zach Levine. Kemba Walker's a quick, obviously one of the fastest players in the league, quick decision guy, saw the opportunity. And again, like that last clip that we saw, just a very quick pitch and catch, quick release, corner three. Those are high efficient plays, especially in transition when the defense is not set. It always is going to be a good look. And even at 5'11", you know, Kemba does have the ability to get that shot off uh, in the face of the defender. A lot of guys think maybe, you know what, they can close out on him because he's short. But you just see that quick release, that nice bounce. Um, you know, as long as that knee is healthy, you're going to get a lot from Kemba Walker, both on and off the ball with Fournier. Again, here, same deal, you know, getting it out in transition. He can trigger the break. Last year, the Knicks had Alfred Payton. I'm sorry, I, meant, I didn't mean to use his name. Um, but a guy who uh, certainly could, could get you into your stuff, but was not going to be a very attacking player, uh, specifically in, in secondary break here. Here, Kemba just sees the, the, the opportunity to attack the block and get after one of the games games elite drivers here of the basketball over the last 10 years of his career finds a very easy opportunity you could have kicked it out to two two players there find found Jalen Brown in that slot uh, left uh, 
position there for a, a catch and shoot three. That's what happens when you draw defenders, you break down. The Knicks certainly did not have that last year with Peyton um, having an opportunity here to have Fournier push the ball and then a very quick attack off the uh, secondary break is, is it's something that's going to lead to a lot of open three pointers. And, and it goes back to the first point about versatility, man, in that when you're adding in Fournier and Kemba, you add that with Julius and RJ. Now you have four guys that can run the break, initiate the offense, maybe push the pace up a little bit. And as you said, open things up, get some more three point opportunities. And I think that would bode well for the Knicks. I mean, the Knicks were only although they were number four in three point percentage, they were 27th in three points attempted and only 24th in three pointers made. It's a great point. Here we were last year, this time talking about Dennis Smith being a guy to push the ball. Right now we're talking about Kemba Walker. We're talking about Edmund Fournier. We know what we what you're going to get from RJ. Uh, big year three for him, but certainly took a major step forward in being transitioned. Now he can sort of be a trail guy. And, and in that scenario there with uh, like a Jalen Brown, just sort of finding a wide open spot and having all day to shoot, he's going to shoot a higher percentage in those, in those situations. This next clip here, Celtics versus Bulls. Again, we see some nice ball movement around the uh, perimeter to get Fournier a good look. Again, this is very simple basketball, but it, what it does is you're moving the ball around the perimeter, making the defense have to close out, and when there's nobody matching up completely five on five, somebody's going to be open. Fournier is a good spot shooter, as we talked about before, not only from the corner, but he's also a good spot shooter, um, as most NBA players are when they're completely wide open. But this is all about kick, drive in and kick. Yes, Marcus Smart um, is, is not a great finisher at the rim, but uh, for the Knicks, you have some guys who are going to be able to get into the paint. Talk about Deuce McBride, talk about Quentin Grimes. We know Derek Rose, you know, the rookies, I think, can, can meld with this group um, in that fashion. And then and Fournier will benefit from that um, just as, as a guy who's going to be able to stand around um, and knock down open shots and keep putting pressure on the defense. Uh, we, we know the Knicks need to increase their three-point makes, their three-point opportunities. That all comes from obviously pressuring the defense, packing the middle, and then kicking the ball out to finding the open man. You know, we talk about Evan Fournier's three-point shooting, rightfully so, 43% from three this season, but he's also a good passer, man. Once again, in the top quarter of the league in assist rate, what do we see here against his old team in the Magic? Well, what I love about this is sort of Robert Williams being, you know, in that Mitch Robinson role of the role man, this time off of dribble handoff. Um, but what you see is Fournier being able to get to the nail. We talked about the nail a lot last year um, and having options, right? You can certainly play pitch and catch with Williams or you can kick it out to Kemba. I like them playing on a string together in this three-man set, which allows for, uh, you know, the defense to have, in this case, it's Cole Anthony. Defense has to make a decision on, do they want to stop the role man or do they want to stop the the three-point line uh and Kemba was the beneficiary there as Cole Anthony a rookie they took advantage of him he didn't know which way to go uh and again you just give Kemba a little space and he's going to be able to knock down that shot but when you have a, an element like Mitchell Robinson who can be the lob guy Fournier can be that guy who can make the pass as well it's not just uh you know a uh, uh, Kemba Walker. It's not just a Derrick Rose. It's not, it's not just your point guard. This is a guy who can come off DHOs at the two or an L cut um, and still find opportunities for your best finisher at the rim, who is Mitchell Robinson. Absolutely, man. I, I just love what these two are, are going to do to, to this Knicks offense and really open things up. You not only have excellent three-point shooters uh, as compared to what Peyton and, and Bullock gave you, but um, shooters off the bounce. And, and that's what we, we were sorely missing, especially last year where that got exposed in the playoffs where, you know, we're really just relying on Julius Randle, Derrick Rose, and, and really Alec Burks because RJ just didn't really have it. And, you know, that was your, your primary offense. But, you know, you have quickly going into year two we'll, we'll see what he can do there Fournier Kemba guys that can create especially at the three-point line off the bounce we see RJ working on that over the summer now with, with Drew Hanlon so I, I think these guys are going to bring a different dynamic and really open things up for RJ and Julius Randle when Fournier came on the show and, and uh, for his interview, he mentioned that, you know, the, the ability to um, really space the floor well for RJ and Julius Randle, allowing them to do what they do best, which is, you know, attack in the mid range and at the rim. Getting Fournier, great get by you. 
uh, really great info from that uh, conversation uh, I found specifically tells you that they are very serious about not only building around Julius Randle, but very serious about building around RJ Barrett as they should. I think he's going to have a monster year three. Uh, one thing that I really like about Fournier as well, if you look back at Kemba's best year, and yes, of course, everybody's going to say, well, the health is always the biggest issue mm -hmm. with Kemba. <laughs> But Kemba had his best year, years with Nick Batum. And there's a lot of Batum in Fournier. And what they have not had the opportunity to play together with is a high-level small forward, a high-level three, versatile three that R.J. Barrett should be. So the, those three, and then you add Randall in there, and then you know, whoever you want to put it at the, at the five, um, I think are going to give the Knicks that – starting boost that they didn't have. I know we talked about the, the net ratings. We know they started slow in first quarters. They were a terrible third quarter team. And I think these additions are going to, uh, to, to really, I think, improve those numbers. Um, I'm just concerned about sort of what gets taken away on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. But I think Fournier makes up for that, especially being able to guard uh, one through four sort of in pick and roll situations. He's a big dude. He's not going to get posted up by bigs or and, and even, you know, middle mid littles, I guess would be uh, the way to call them. Um, I just like how this roster is constructed and uh, really excited for sure. Yeah. I, I also wonder how, you know, the additional spacing impact Julius and RJ in terms of finishing at the rim, because we know that especially with RJ, I mean, he was at the top, he was at the top of the league in terms of rim attempts, uh, 42%, but only finished 55% of those. So that, and so he was at the bottom in terms of finishing at the rim. Julius conversely, uh, a small number, only 23% of his shots came at the rim but also finished very poorly 59 percent there so i'm wondering what the extra spacing that that kemba and fournier provide how that impacts um the the shot mix for julius and rj and whether or not they're able to finish a little bit better at the rim it's tricky when there's not a lot of space obviously finishing at the rim it gets crowded the lane is crowded um I'm interested to see that as well. They don't, they didn't add the element of the big that can sort of right, stretch right. out. You still have Mitch there. Um, you know, and, and I think that is still a missing piece. Um, we've heard the name Miles Turner. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a lot as the year goes on. Um, but not having that element, you looked in that, you saw in that first clip, even having a guy like Cornette, you know, what mm -hmm. he does, what he did for that. Um, Celtics. specific play there mm -hmm. in, the, in the Celtics in his minutes. Um, you have to respect him at the top of the key. And, you know, that does open up not only drives to the basket and cuts to the basket, but those little L cuts that, that get you some open shots as well. Um, but finishing at the rim, I think is going to be a very big deal here. And if it doesn't improve, they're going to have to probably address the spacing at some point just to make it easier for your your better players and your best players, um, you know, to get those two or four, you know, more points and, you know, the opportunities that, um, you know, can win and lose games. Absolutely, man. Going to be interesting to see what these two bring to, to the team, but certainly exciting times for the New York Knicks. And uh, Tommy, great job as usual on these, uh, on these X's and O's breakdowns, man. We'll, we'll check in next time. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm really excited here. September's coming around. You know what that means? Leaves. People say it's college football. I think it's about training camp. So uh, excited to be with you. Great talking to you as always, CP, and uh, looking forward to the next one.